Good shot. Welcome back to Work Guitars. Good to talk to you again. It's about a thousand degrees outside, so don't joke my white legs. I had to put shorts on. It's super, super hot where we are here in Virginia, Southeast Virginia. And in the summertime here, it doesn't joke around. I'm sure it's uh, much hotter even further south as you go, but Southeast Virginia, man, the humidity and the heat will run you the hell out of outdoors back into the house. I can tell you that right now. But anyway, today we're working on this beautiful bass for Steve Budazuski. That's how Steve said I should say it. And man, if I'm butchering your name, it's all my fault. fault. Steve. Steve's over there. Say hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. <laughs> so we've got the neck right. The fretboard is glued on. Got the back of the neck shaped, right? Like, okay. All right, so that's good. So what we want to do now, and I'll get you over closer to show you all that a little bit. Really kind of, you know, I don't need to explain it. I'll get you closer. So one thing I do want to do though is this, right here at the end of the fretboard I haven't done yet, is I need to put a little curve in there and I'm going to do that real quick. And then we're going to drill, drill the holes and put in the ferrules and the inserts. I'm using these easy lock threaded inserts for this guitar. Instead of just wood screws, we're going to put inserts in. These are uh, 1024 stainless steel inserts. And we'll be using stainless steel screws as well. So you got to get all that done. So first of all, though, I'm going to put this curve on here, man, and I'll get you over a little closer, show you what we're doing, and we'll go from there, okay? Before I go any further, I just want to say thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please consider reaching down there and touching the subscribe button and signing up. And if you have already, you're awesome. Thank you very much. Hit the like button, man, if you like what you see. If you have any questions, please throw them down in the comments, Ben, down there. If you just got some comment of some kind or something you see you don't like or do like, by all means, man, let's start the conversation. I'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so I want to do a curve at the bottom of this fretboard. And I've just got my French curve out here. This thing is great for finding curves, nice and smooth. And something that you like. You can move it around until you see something, a curve that looks correct to you. Like that right there. Just like that. Because that's not a concentric curve there, I have to, I mean, it's an ever changing curve. So I had to flip it over. So that's what we want to do. Just put a nice little curve at the end of the front here. Like that. And Steve is over there today working on a neck. Say hey, Steve. He's carving the base of the neck in there on one of the other models that we're building today. Working on today, I should say. All right, can you guys see what I did there? All right, see that pencil line? All right, we're going to get rid of that meat right there. That's our waist. We're just going to sand that off and make that nice smooth curve at the bottom of the fretboard, just like this here. The fretboard hangs over a little. I like to leave the fretboard hanging past the joint. It kind of hang, hides the joint and, and it, you know, just looks cleaner to me on bolt-on necks. So that's what we're going to do. Before I go any further though, I think I need to put my microphone on. Let me do that and we'll get this done. Okay, we're back over here. Get the sander. Take that little fixture off there I had set up. Square this back up. I've had this old sander for 30 years probably. This wood that it's made out of, that wood, washed up on the beach. And I snagged it. And this is a piece of bender board, and all it is is 
a shaft and two pill block, pillow blocks, I believe they're called. They come with the bearings already in, the shaft fits in there. Shaft in the center, I mean a uh, pulley in the center, hooked up to a motor down below. And I just bought this disc, made this a long, long time ago. And it served me well. Done a lot of work on it. <clears throat> All right, got her squared back up. Want to sand that curve on the end of the neck. And just add a little something, something to the end there. And that's as easy as doing this. Good. Let's see how it looks on the guitar. Let's clean it up a little. <clears throat> Excuse me, My throat's a little dry. I'm out of water. Sand and block, where is it? Here it is. <clears throat> around that little corner, that hard corner over. Like that. Yeah, that looks good. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, man. That's clean looking. Okay. There's a shadow on there. You can't really see it, but there you go. That's what we did. All right. So now that we got that done, let's put some ferrules in this thing. This is where the tricky part comes in. Now, what I did a long time ago is I made one of these little jig blocks that drop right down in that pocket like that, where those holes should be. Now on the next ones that I do, if I do more of these, I'll probably go ahead and drill the holes on the CNC. But this is easy enough to do here to take one of these, uh, I forget what they're called. These little drive pins, you can buy kits on them like this. Uh, man, I can't think of the, the actual name of it at the moment, what they're technically called, but they're great for marking things through holes like that. Drop it in a hole the right size and you can hole punch. Maybe that's what they're called like that. And it marks the hole for you in the adjacent piece. It works really well. Very accurate. So that marks those holes and I like to take a pencil and make the point a little darker down there so you can actually see it like that. Then when you go over to the drill press, <clears throat> you can see what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller bit like this 16th of an inch bit here and drill all the way through on the drill press. 
then I can turn it over and I'll know exactly where the holes are to drill the 5 8 holes for the ferrules. And then we'll drill the big hole through for the actual screw and then we'll do the neck itself. So let's get these drilled in first and then we'll do the inserts on the neck. All right. So let me get set up to do that. We'll be right back. Okay. Just put that in my way. And I got to figure out how to clean the threads on this thing or something so it operates a little more friendly. It's so hard to get this thing to turn anymore. The humidity has gotten to it. It's gotten funky in there. I need to get some liquid wrench, I think, and spray oh, it down. The old liquid wrench. And the proper key. The proper key would be nice, wouldn't it? That one's close, but it ain't quite right. Nope. Okay. Can they see what we're doing here, Steve? You're the cameraman at the moment. All right. All right. I'm ready. All right. So, got the drill bit in. Get that out of the way. That'll go through. That's what we want. Move this over just a tad. Tighten that up. And somebody needs to move some of this stuff out of the way. I think that would be me. That's somebody. All right, tighten that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now you see those little holes on the back. That's how we know where to drill the 5 8 holes. All we need now is a 5 8 bit. There it is right here. That's it. That's it. You know I got to get paid. Here's the tricky part. Now we got to get the depth right. And I know it's about that deep about halfway up this thing if you're wondering how I knew that this Forstner bit these things go about halfway up and that's the perfect depth to get you started and then I'll set a stop you bring it back down in and bring the stop down and we're good
right, that gives us our ferrule holes. Now we need a five millimeter hole down through the center of that. that stop we're about halfway through right there that way we don't bust out on the other side I'm going to stop it just before it hits the table so it's not going to go all the way through and bust out any of the wood just in case it's slightly out of line. You don't want it to bust anything out. Nice clean holes. Right? Not a big bunch of big chunks missing. Alright, let's move back over to the bench. Okay, so we got the holes drilled for the ferrules and the screws. This is good. Nice clean holes, ferrule drops in, screw drops in. We don't have any issues. Right? Nice and clean. That's what we want. I like the ferrule to be a little bit deeper because I'm going to sand that a little more anyway. And the ferrule below the wood feels better to me and I'll round over the edge of the little hole there so it's nice and clean. And in my opinion, uh, it's better than a steel plate back there. Which works, but I think this is a little cleaner. So, now that we've done that, we can use this to mark the back of the neck. And we'll do the same thing we did before. I'll put this in here and clamp it in so that it's in place where it's supposed to be. So, let me do it the other way so I don't have the clamp in the way. Like that. So I can get to the holes like that. Clamp this in place and then we can mark through there into the neck and then the holes will line up perfectly when we go to put the screws and inserts in. Make sure it's sitting in the pocket right. Everything looks good there. All right. I think I'll just do that so it don't fall over. Now I need to find the correct hole punch. I believe it's that one. Nope, next one up. 
Maybe the next one up. Just slightly smaller. That's that's good right there. All right. So now we have those marked. Get that out of the way. <clears throat> Darken that hole up a little bit so we can see it. There you go. Now those holes line up perfectly what's what's on the base. Now comes the fun part. Putting in the inserts. So now we have to use this bit that comes with this kit here. The Easy Lock Threaded Insert Kit. And it also comes with a tool that makes it much easier to screw in these inserts. And I like to do that on the drill also. This fits right down inside there perfectly like that in the top of the insert. To get you closer you can see that. top of the insert has some threads, a, uh, like a straight slot screw in the top. This fits perfectly down on top of that, like that. But I also bought, let me move you back. I also went ahead and bought the threaded tool, and I think that'll be better. This one has threads on the end of it that actually thread down inside your piece, your insert, except this one might not be the right size. Except this one isn't the right size. I bought the one that's the next size up. So we will be using this instead. You can get one that has the threads in it, like this. So I need to buy that one, but I believe this will work good because it does fit nice and tight in there. And that's what we're going to try out today. But because you get the right size drill bit that they suggest you use for the threaded insert, that helps a lot. You're not guessing at the exact right size you need to be using or anything. for the, you know To get these things down inside this maple without a big hassle. All right, so let's go over to the drill press, get this set up, get that drilled. I'll be right back. Let me go get set up. Okay, so got the drill bit in that came in the kit. And according to this insert, wait a minute, let me get this thing turned on, calibrated properly here. Take it off a of metric. Needs to be a half an inch. So I'll put some tape on here just to give me an indicator of how to set my stop. And I've got the stop set. The stop is on this side over here. You can't see it. Much like any other drill press kind of set up. And I have these boards that already have fret slots cut in them for doing stuff like this on guitars that already have the net, you know, the fret boards glued in. And it's got the radius in it and everything sits flat. So when you're, you know, working on it, it's not trying to roll around on you. And I've got this set pretty good. I'm going to try one and then we'll test it with the calipers and see if we're right. And then we'll get the holes drilled and go from there. See how we did. Make 
make sure the hole is empty. Point five two three. We're slightly over a half an inch. Okay. And I'm going to go with that because I want this insert to be, the top of that insert to be slightly under the surface of this neck right here. So there's no issue with it doing something weird. Poking into the wood in any kind of weird way. So it's slightly under. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go with that. Let's drill the rest of the holes. Good and clean. Now we're going to use that tool I showed you guys to help drive these in using this because it'll drive straight down when you're turning it. You're not putting any pressure in any way in any other direction except straight down. So this will act like our screwdriver. Let me go get that tool. I'll be right back. Spread it out. I've been listening to ZZ Top. Now I've got that song Sleeping Bag stuck in my head. It could be worse. All right. This is our screwdriver now, essentially. Put the insert on there, like so. Bring this down, let me take the stop off. Bring this down here. And it'll center up in the hole properly. Then I just hold a little tension here like this. And this screws it in. And so this is pushing down on it. And this is obviously turning it. Except it's a good workout for your forearm. I know somebody's going to say, well, why don't you just turn the drill press on? <laughs> because I can just see all sorts of things going wrong when I did that. Oh, that scared me. We go. We're almost perfectly flush now, and that is slightly below the surface. And that's what we're looking for, just like that. Now that insert went straight in, no issues. Now these can be tricky to get in, especially if you're just trying to do it by freehand, because they'll want to get cocked out of shape. Let me get a sand and block and sand that okay. and we'll make sure that's what I like. So it's still just slightly proud of the surface. I want to go a little bit below that. That looks good though. Get us back down inside there where we need to be. Get the screw lined back up. There you go. It just dropped back into place. And the door is acting as a nice stop for me. Ugh. I think that's what I want right there. Yeah, there you go. About a twenty thousandths of an inch underneath. Not quite a thirty second. All right, that's what we want to do. Let me go get the other inserts. That worked great. I'm very happy with that. That's what we were looking for. Just like that. 
And we got nice stainless steel inserts in here instead of just wood threads that could strip out. Of course, you could strip these too if you really try, but they can be replaced. No problem. All right, let me go get the rest of the inserts. We'll get them in and then we'll put the neck in the body and scope it out. See where we're at. All right, hold on. <laughs> All right. A couple more to go. This is a good forearm workout here, Steve. Yes. The <laughs> Driving that thing in. Oh, that one doesn't want to stay up in there. So we'll do it the hard way. Let me try this hand out until it gets tired. Of course, now that the, the um, this thing came loose, you want to fight with me now? I see how it's going to be. All right, you want to fight with me? Okay. When I got this drill press, this key doesn't really fit this thing well, very well. And I need to buy a new one, but I keep procrastinating. And I've been told if you go all the way around it and tighten each one, it's better. Let's find out. Okay, locking that in. And driving it in. I need some, I need a handle on this thing. It's got a little torque, you know. I'll come up with a better way one day. But this seems to work really well. Nice, nice. I like it. Right about here is where it starts getting tough. And then it breaks loose. shit man <laughs> the thing broke that you drive it in with one. what do you think about that uh, <laughs> all righty then so now we got a, it in America. it may be oh man didn't I have a little tool for it at one time Okay guys, so this is the end, the official end of the video for the Easy Lock 1024 wood inserts in the neck of that base hanging right over there. Let me grab the base. As you can see, we've got it together, finally. 
The reason I'm doing it like this now, this ending, is because I had so much trouble at the end trying to get the last two inserts in because the POS tool that they give you broke by me just turning it by hand with a little bit of down pressure on it. I, uh, I guess it, the maple was just too great for it to deal with and it broke. So they make a tool that is threaded, but I could not find one that would go in the 1024. I could find a quarter 20, but I couldn't find the 1024 threaded insert insertion tool, I guess you would call it, right? It essentially threads down into the um, you thread it down into the insert insert itself and it stops on the top and then you can just crank it in like that. Couldn't find one on Amazon. I was just going to wait and buy the right tool, you know, the one that would hopefully do the job. Now I know maple is tough to deal with and in some situations you can put a little soap on your threads or something and drive that in. But I don't want to do that. I want those threads to be in there, you know, as stiff and as hard, I guess you could say, as they can be. So what I did instead was I went down to Tractor Supply and I bought one of these. That bit right there. I mean, that little tool right there. That little tool. Screw. Right? And it has an Allen wrench socket in the top. I then took that and drove it down in top of the insert. For some reason, of course, now I can't get it to go down in there all the way. Threads are jacked up a little or something on it. But after it got all the way down in there, let me get it down in there. I'm not sure why it's fighting me. After I got it to go down in, all the way to the bottom, I'll show you what I mean. Like this, it's threaded all the way in. I could then use the socket with the Allen wrench and one of these tools right with the proper Allen wrench and drive it down in on the drill press. That's what I ended up doing. And then I just came over here for the last little tweak that I wanted and just put a tool on it and turned it until I got it exactly where I wanted. That worked extremely well. I suggest if you do these to go and buy the 1024 or whatever thread that it is that you were using with the socket, um, Allen wrench socket on the top of it. And don't even try the tools that come with these kits. You can if you want, but this worked extremely well. So I suggest you do that. And then once this is in, all the way down in, you can just crank this little screw back out of there and now you're good to go. And man, it was a trip because I had to stop in the middle of filming and leave and go to Tractor Supply and buy a couple little things to try to make myself a tool to finish up the job that I was trying to do. I had no idea I was going to run into this problem. We did some on the other base over here. Let me grab that base and show it to you. We did some on this base with a screw that I took, cut the head off the screw, a 1024 threaded stainless steel screw, two inch, and put two nuts on it so that they would lock together and made a tool essentially that I could put on a drill press and turn in. It worked. We got the threaded inserts in. I tried to use that same tool on this and it broke in half. And I was like, you know, where it just sheared right off. I don't know. It's a particularly difficult piece of wood, I guess. So at that point, as you can imagine, I was starting to get a little irritated. And so I had to stop and I had to run over to Tractor Supply and I bought this rig here 
And man, this works. So in conclusion, after all of that stuff, you want to do threaded inserts. You can do them on the drill press. It works great. You just need to make sure you get one of these screws with the Allen wrench socket in the head and use an Allen wrench just like this on a bit holder just like this in the drill press. Then you can use the drill press to help you drive it down in. I had so much trouble that day. And then, of course, the drill press, you know, just wouldn't cooperate. The, um, the chuck was freezing up, you know, from just being in the humidity. And I couldn't get it to turn right. And, man, it was just a battle the whole time I was trying to do a video. But, you know, that's the way it goes when you're building things, right? You never know what's going to go wrong when you can't keep everything perfect all the time. I can't. You may be able to. You may have lots of time to go around and maintain all your tools to perfection. I do not have that luxury. I got to get in here and I got to go to work. When I find a problem, I stop and I fix it, you know. So anyway, that's fixed. This is fixed. All is well that ends well. This is the end of the video. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And, you know, hit the like button if you can. If you would, please hit the like button. The algorithms, man. It's about the algorithms. And let's see what else. Oh, and, you know, send in your comments, man. We'd like to talk about what we're doing, how we're doing it. You may have a better suggestion. If you do, please, by all means, share it with me. If you have any questions about what I did or why I did it, I'd be glad to share that with you. And we work together on it, man. We might come up with a better uh, solution. You might learn something. I might learn something. And again, all is well. That ends well. Okay, that's it. Easy lock, 1024 threaded inserts and a base net. Peace. You guys be kind to each other. Be good to each other. And we will see you out there somewhere. Go see some bands. All right? Go. Go see them. Bye now.